My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me. A rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strained whisper again, and turning back, I discovered that even though I had moved, she was still looking right into my soul. That was when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues are living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're... <laughs>
You're not supposed to be here.
My beloved Galatea, after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what small mercies I could. I began to talk to them, to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I'd learned as a child. As the others became more concerned by my charity, I sought solitude from them, preferring the company of my tormented charges. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne, Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, discovered that his beloved Galatea had come to life. It was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Forgive me. 
I know that is not your real name, just one I have borrowed from a story. But when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisitely beautiful woman I have ever known. Your face forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. Our meeting gave me new purpose, to free you from your golden prison so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. Ooh. 
Beloved Galatea, my attempts at freeing these souls from their golden prisons have not been going to plan. My first charge was a Greek woman who I called Iodami after the Athenian turned to stone by Medusa. Drilling through the gold that encased her, I was vindicated by the discovery that beneath half an inch of gold, which is so rigid it must be some kind of alloy, was living flesh. Unfortunately, this golden alloy seems to have fused with her skin, so removing it exposed the sinew and muscle beneath and appeared to cause her great pain. At first, I braced myself, expecting that inflicting such pain would break the golden rule, and yet, somehow, it did not. It seems whichever god is responsible for imprisoning these poor souls does not care about their suffering at all. They are forsaken. Undeterred, I pressed on, working late into the night, attempting to remove the golden layer that encased her as delicately as I could. Eventually, I was able to free most of her body, but when I released her from her restraints, her first act was to lunge for my throat clawing at me with all her strength and those sharp metal talons. This was my thanks for trying to save her. Whatever possessed Iodami to attack, she was clearly not a suitable subject for my experiment, and I was forced to lock her inside an isolated wing of the palace and bar the door. As I continued working on others, I could hear her flailing and launching herself at the other side endlessly. Regrettably, my other experiments bore similar results, and after relocating a few times, most of the palace is now too dangerous to work in. Still, as much as my heart aches to know that you're suffering, I cannot risk attempting to ungild you yet. Not until I have perfected a method that will bring you back to me, whole in both mind and body, and ensuring your humanity is preserved. I promise you this, one day we will be together, even if I have to free every last statue in this god's forsaken place.
And you must be the wretched snake who broke into my palace and disturbed my experiments. And worst of all, look at what you made me do to her. This never would have happened if you just stayed away. You're going to pay for that. And do you think I care about that? I don't care what happens to me, as long as you get what you deserve. Liar! I locked and barred the gate. I left a message, warning you all to leave me alone. I just wanted to do my experiments in peace, for her. And now look at her. You made me turn the most beautiful woman I've ever seen into this. Look at her. She's in agony. All I wanted was to spend my last moments with her. To see her beautiful face, to hear her speak freely, instead of in those cryptic whispers. But as soon as I began my work, she stopped whispering to me. And now I discover she started whispering to you instead. What's so special about you? What do you mean the same voice? Hmm. Yes. I remember when they used to whisper to me. They did sound similar. I just thought it was because all voices sound the same when they whisper. But now that I think about it, they were all benevolent and seemed to share a common knowledge. But if these bodies are mere conduits for that one voice, then this body is nobody. And... Everything I've done here was... was... Wait, I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal her away from me. Were you planning to wait until I'd done all the hard work, then swoop in? Is that it? Liar! You tried to steal her away from me, and now look what you made me do. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't peel you, too. What? What are you talking about? Wait. So you're saying... you weren't coming for us? So I did all this. I ruined her. For nothing. What have I done? Oh, God, I feel sick. I am... I can't bear the thought of her being like this. And in so much pain. It's the air coming into contact with her flesh. It's agonizing for them. But the only way to fix it will be to break the golden rule and let it run its course. At least that way she'd be golden again and we'd be together. All it would take is one little cut. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.